Alrighty, welcome to episode 51 of Black Hole's Let's Play series. Okay, I do not have enough power. I still don't have enough power. I need a lot more, um, MJ. And I'm all out of room in here. Hmm. Uh. Oh, never mind. I'll uh, just pull something. No. I'll... Sorry. I'm making um, solid fueled fireboxes instead of liquid fuel. I'm going to build another giant boiler, but this time I'm going to use solid fuel instead of liquid fuel. Because it's just to be different. Get some charcoal in there or something. Certainly have plenty of wood. Anyway. Right. I have, um, disabled... Ah! Damn! Both of my, uh, link chambers by removing the power input to them. Because when they keep coming on and off, they change the network, and every time the network changes, all the orders are cancelled, which means I can't craft anything. Okay. Nine of these. And... 36 of these. So, yeah, things might go a little bad over here, but there's just not much I can do about it. Must be. Oh darn, I'm all out of the steel I'd made up. It's gotta make more. That, as we all know, takes a long time. But yeah, running low on EU. Seriously low on MJ. It might be building up now that I've disabled those things. I don't know, it might still be going down. It's bad, it's bad. Oh, we're gonna need a lot of steam engines. A whole other set of. What is this by nine? One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, so we need a whole other eighteen more steam engines. Yeah, it's crazy. And the steam engines are the biggest producers. Well, except for electrical engines, but they use EU, which would not really be solving my problem at all. Let's see. I think I'm gonna make up all that, build the thing, and then I'll come back. Jeez, it's <laughs> a lot of power. And then I'll come back and we'll get on to the other things I wanted to do today. Cause you don't, know, you've, you don't, you've seen me crafting things. Okay, so I built the boiler. It's the same design as these ones, of course, except that you use the solid-fueled ones instead of liquid-fueled. Uh, it's got four slots for fuel. Fill, I've got a, a separate um, uh, aqueous accumulator underneath it, because probably too much for it to handle all three. Anyway, let's just get some charcoal. Got uh, just a basic export bus for now. Oh cool! All kinds of things about it. Yeah, it will use a, it will use it up really fast when it first starts up, but it'll get better. Once they start producing steam, it'll bring everything up to 100% capacity. 
And then of course you'll be wasting some, but that's okay. I'm gonna start building the extra stuff now. Yeah, um, for some reason it hasn't been... The, the network keeps going down. I don't know why. But it's really bad. I did make a lot of steel, though. Making a lot of manually, too. Okay, while that's going on... Hmm... There are some cool new Tinker's Construct tools. Anyway, um... One of the new mods I added when, uh... I... did that last time as um, a new mod by Chicken Bones, who has made a lot of the mods I use. Uh, Chicken Chunks, the Chunk Loaders, he made NEI right here, he made uh, Ender Tanks, um, it's more than that, the Translocators, up here, these things, he made these. So he's got a lot of kinds of cool stuff, and he has yet another cool mod. It's um, an open API called Forge Multipart. So what it does is, you may, might remember the um, the Amoebus microblocks, where I could take smaller blocks and place them around. Well, it does that, basically. But it's an open API to allow all kinds of other mods and vanilla things to interact with. It's a way of allowing multiple things to fit within one block space. And it's really cool. One of the things it can do, like I said, it affects vanilla items too, so or blocks too. So certain vanilla blocks can be fit in one block. Now, let me just show you. With like torches. Torches are one of the things. So if I put a torch in the corner here. Ah and it stops lagging. Okay. And then I put another torch right there. These two torches are in the same block. Normally that would be impossible, but this mod allows you to do that. That is pretty awesome. It is so going to be big. I can tell it's going to be huge. So it also enables um there's a a saw Three hand saws, hand diamond, iron, stone saws. That you can use to, to cut up blocks and make micro blocks to for decoration or whatever. But um, the other thing it does is that uh, the whole reason he even invented it is for wireless redstone, chicken bones edition. So wireless redstone is a mod that has, well, Redstone wirelessly. You can transmit redstone signals across dimensions or, or any distance wirelessly. He used to rely on red power to do this really cool design thingy that I'm going to show you because I'm going to build some. But uh, red power stopped updating. So that's where Forge Multipart came in. He invented that. So I now have wireless redstone and I'm happy because wireless redstone is pretty cool. So, all right, all the way down here. Oop. We have three different parts. Core, logic, and add-ons. Which is kind of annoying, actually, because now I can't really show them very easily. Anyway, um, I want a bunch of things wirelessly controlled from here or whatever. Uh, one of those things is that I would like to be able to disable my quarry be to save power. So just for mostly demonstration purposes, let's get get started on that. So the first thing I'm gonna need is a wireless Okay, we got transmitters, receivers, and, and jammers. Don't worry about jammers. Um I guess we'll do we'll, yeah, we'll do both. Let's do a receiver. Kind of stick a wireless transceiver, a rether pearl, which is an ender pearl surrounded by glowstone and redstone. I am all out of glowstone. 
Huh. Time to take a trip to the nether. Yeah. Jeez. I moved my, um, magic mining machine over here. Doing a pretty good job. Here being the other side of the, the track. Well, I'm gonna go get some glowstone. Okay. I guess I should get a receiver. Okay, I gotta make it with obsidian. An obsidian stick. Okay, wireless receiver and a wireless transmitter. I'm also going to make a wireless remote. Okay. Let's see, what's the best way to do this? Yeah, let's use some logic gates. Okay, um... Logic gates... These ones come from... Imibis... Uh, red logic, I think is what he calls it. It's basically, he's ripping off red power. Red power didn't get updated, so he said, fine, I'll make my own mod that does the exact same thing. It looks exactly the same. So, I want a, it's got to be a toggle latch. T latch, okay, cool. Okay. Ah! Well, maybe this is not the best. Okay. Wireless transmitter right here. Place it down and let's go to the advanced menu. Here you can, uh, it looks, works somewhat like a tesseract in that it's got different frequencies and numbers that relate to the frequencies. So if I give it a value of 1, let's say, and give it a frequency name of quarry. Okay, sorry, mm -hmm. set it to 1. Then type it in. Set name. Hello. Is that working? Huh. Looks like it might be still buggy.
because it's supposed to be rendering like a little orb thingy and other things. Let's see if it's working. Okay, I can select it. Oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. So, there we go. Okay, so because they're on the same frequency, one, it's transmitting the redstone signal between here and here wirelessly. Okay, so now what I want to do is make it. I guess I'm gonna need another trans receiver. Ah. Okay. Toggle latch. Now, the reason these two look so similar, again, is because they're both copying Red Power's style. Okay, a toggle latch, when it receives a redstone signal here, it will toggle its state. So, see, off doesn't do anything. Every time it freezes it on, it flips between putting a redstone signal out this direction and putting it out this direction. So basically, by hitting this once, like a button, you change that one. So it's off now, hit it once, it's on. It's on as long as you want. Hit again, and it goes back to off. So now, I'll put this wireless receiver down, and set it to 2, or no, set the name to 2, and then call it Quarry Toggle. Set, and then... I'm not used to this. Okay. So now... Okay. So now if I use the wireless remote... The wireless remote is basically a handheld version of the transceiver. So if I hold shift and right click, I can set it just like that. So I'm going to hit quarry toggle. When I hold it, right click, there it turns the redstone signal on, which toggled that. Don't hold over there. Let go, and let's go. Turn it back on, on. So I can just tap it, and now I'll be able to turn it on, or turn it off, turn it on. Off, on, off, on. Okay, now I just need to go to my quarry, place the wireless receiver. Uh, I don't think there's a good way to get there. I don't have like a linking book or anything. So I'll just walk there and be back when I'm there. Okay, at my quarry. Now, you can't actually disable the quarry itself with a redstone signal. It doesn't respond at all. You can, however, shut the power to the tesseract, which is what this lever was for, but now I'm going to get rid of that. Okay, so I'm going to change this to uh, enabled high. So only with a high redstone signal will it activate this here, set it to quarry, and there. So now it's on, and I'll keep working. But, if I just tap this, it'll shut off, shut that toggle little thing, turn off that power, and given some time, it'll run out of juice and stop running. It might take a while. a big buffer of power, but I think it's slowing maybe. Whatever. It'll stop. Gah, clouds. Okay, so now I can... There it goes. It stopped. So now I can shut down my quarry with a flip of a switch. Go. Stop. There it goes. Ha 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 ha. Cool. Okay. Now I'm going to go back home. Alrighty. So I added another row of engines. Finally. And now I'm actually building up 
At least without the quarry. I turned the quarry back on. With my handy, handy remote. So with this setup, I should be able to output 100% on everything. All the time. Man, not waste any, hopefully. Doesn't look like it. Uh, the, the steam boilers automatically output their steam at halfway, so that's where... If they're all resting at half, that means that there's no steam being wasted. And it could still be going down, so I wouldn't worry about that at the moment. But. So hopefully, we'll, we'll see if that's enough. Turning off high power things like the quarry and the mass fab are definitely important. A lot of honey. Okay, next thing on my list of things to do today. Uh, a new mod. A mod I've been wanting to, and talking and or er, talking to myself. Sorry, not talking to you. Haha, -ha, keeping you in the dark. A mod I've been thinking about for an awful long time. Finally, it is time. Uh, yeah, my, my, my thing is full of stuff. Logistics pipes. Now, the history of logistics pipes. Well, in the beginning, there was buildcraft. And it was okay, but it was pretty dumb. Pipes act individually. They don't work together. Each pipe only knows what it has and where it's going. It doesn't communicate with the other pipe in any way. So a guy named Kraft, 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 invented a mod, an add-on mod for Buildcraft called Logistics Pipes, which add pipes that were intelligent, that communicated with each other, and allowed you to do complex interactions and systems. Um, Algorithm X2 uh, liked Logistics Pipes, but thought that it could use some work and so he invented applied energistics. So applied energistics is very similar to logistics pipes. It's it's based off logistics pipe with its own twist on things. And uh, logistics pipes and applied energistics have some uh, compatibilities with each other. They work together. They they're pretty well. Um, but there are a few things that one does that the other doesn't. So. There are a few things that Logistics Pipes does that Applied Energistics doesn't do, and I want to get to using those things. So, let's see, where do I begin? I guess I should begin by making some. Ma oh, there we go. Making a basic Logistics Pipes pipe. Everything is based off of the basic Logistics Pipe. Okay. Right. You can craft any of the other pipes back to logistics pipes. Basic ones. Okay. So, basic ones. Redstone, cobblestone, diamond transport pipe. Either a redstone, golden chipset, or a gold gear. Uh, this, is, this is a lot of these things. We'll either use the chipset or the gear. The gear's using more material. The chipset's using an assembly table and all that jazz that needs to do that. I have actually already set up the thing to make the chips. There we go. Yes, I have. To make different kinds of chips. Uh, just to refresh everyone's memories, make the chip sets in a. Ah, yeah, lag. In an assembly table with lasers to power it. Um, with uh, these chip sets are made with one redstone and then one whatever material. So iron, gold, or diamond. I set those up ahead of time a couple episodes ago. Okay, so that's that. I think I'm gonna need to make the diamond pipes and the cobblestone pipes. Now I already have redstone torches and glass and all that jazz. 
Okay. So let's order up a basic logistics pipe. That was fast. Cool. Okay, now I'm not going to be using logistics pipes in its entirety. I'm going to be using it with applied energistics. So at this point, at least, I'm not going to give a, a full uh, breakdown of the entire mod and how to use all the different pipes and things. That's just not what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be using it to do something very sp specific. I'm going to want... Provider crafting satellite supplier logistics chassis crafting There it is, remote order logistics pipe. Okay, just redstone and an ender pearl. Bam. Okay. The remote orderer pipe uh is can be used somewhat like the wireless access terminal. It's a way of accessing things. So in logistics pipes you would need to use a particular pipe to access the thing. It works a lot like the terminal here where you can pull stuff out and things and order crafting and, and stuff. The remote order logistics pipe is a lot like the wireless thing there, and uh, here are the remotes. Let's see. Using two diamond chipsets. I already have one, so let's just make another one. Okay. Now, one of the things that logistics pipes and uh, applied energistics do is that. Um, they're really great at working with each other. The uh, they both use power, right? A bit. Uh, logistics pipes does a similar sort of thing as as um, applied energistics. It has a block that accepts buildcraft or uh, industrial craft power and uses it to power the network. What's really cool is that these two mods will power each other. So I don't need to build that block at all. I can actually power the logistics network with the applied energistics network. All you need is an interface. So let me just craft one of those. There we go. Interface. never actually done this before, so it's going to be fun. Ah! Yeah! Okay, you know what? I'm going to move my ender chest. Because it doesn't really need to be here or anywhere that I can see it. Because I have the, the pouch to access it. Come on. Okay, it's making it. It's just taking a long time. I'll just wait till it's done. Okay, made up that chipset. Okay, now I got a remote orderer. And uh, you can dye these, as it shows here. Just, just for color. I'm gonna make mine orange, because I can. Orange is sort of like construction. It's like my... This is how you access the stuff. Anyway, I'm also going to need a different kind of pipe. The provider pipe. There's a Mark II and... But don't worry about that. Uh, okay, that one's also going to need a golden chipset. 
I wish I had taken a moment or two to think ahead and make that one ahead of time. Oh well. And thanks to the magic of editing, my golden chipset is done. Okay, so we need a provider pipe. Okay, now what the provider pipe does is it's sort of like the um, applied energistic storage bus. It allows access to whatever storage it's next to to the logistics pipes network. So let me move this over one. Uh, I guess I don't need this interface because I have an interface right here. Okay, I've put the provider logistics pipe, sorry, right next to it. I should get power from it. Uh, remote order next to that. Ender chest. Okay, clearly it's not getting power. Let me... Get a basic pipe. There we go. Okay, I guess it only wanted to take power for the basic pipe. Uh, the buildcraft pipe here is just acting as a regular pipe. I'll explain more about how logistics pipe works, but for now, know that this is to accepting power from the applied logistics network. And provider pipe, I'm going to see if I can get my wrench out and it will tell me things about them. There we go. Okay. Now, let's right-click uh, the remote orderer onto the remote orderer pipe to sync them. Connect it to pipe. Now, if I right-click, bam! Just like the other remote, it uh, shows me everything in the network. Slightly different GUI, but it's still the same idea. I can search for things. And I can order things. So let's get a stack of, or let's see. Mm. These ones, the little ones go up and down by one, the two goes up by ten, and these three ones go up by stack. So let's real quick to a stack of coal. There it goes. It goes into the ender chest that it's attached to. Mm. So I can use my ender pouch to access it. Oh yes. This means that with, with this combination of the remote order and the ender pouch like this, I can access everything anywhere. Mm. Anywhere. Oh, yes. So wherever I go, any world, any dimension, except the connection to a dissonant cost of energy. Huh, interesting. But yeah, I can access anything. And because I can access anything, I don't need to carry everything around inside here. So I can pull a lot of this stuff out. Because if I need it, I'll just call it for it. I guess I'll keep that in there. Put the hole back. I think I'll keep that. Why do I have a clay golem worker in there? I don't even know. Never did show you what the crumple horn does. Let's go do that. All right. Oh right. Oh. Wait, I think the book is still there. Uh -huh. Lol. Anyway. My crumple horn. Huh, it cracks the stone. Uh, let's see, it also, yeah, cracks stone into cobblestone. Uh, 
Cobblestone and the gravel? Yeah. Oh, I, I'm not holding it down anymore. Uh, okay, okay, stop. Stop now. Okay. See ya. Interesting way to make cracked stone if you think that cracked stone looks good. Anyway. Oh, I guess now would be a good time to show that I can use my remote orderer way out here. Let's say I need a bucket. Requesting bucket. And there it is. My bucket. Oh, yeah. Pretty awesome. So that's why I have been trying to remember to do this for a long time now. And if I put things back in the network, I've already got this ender pouch. It's like, just throw all these things in there. Oh, right, I disabled that. Oh, yeah, I gotta put that... I gotta put that one back. It's not where it should be right now. I still use a heck of levers. So shard. I still haven't... I've started filling it up with cows. Oh, and I have a safari net with a cow in it. Lol. Still a lot of things I can put away. Chainsaw and the drill. And the things. Oh, I'll, I'll pull those out if I need them. So yeah, awesome. Wireless access. Uh. There it is. Okay, I I gotta get back out. Okay, I'm back home. And I uh, realize it's time to finish the episode. So, uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the episode. Hope you like the awesome logistics mm. power. <laughs> Alright. Uh, see you later.